In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, I welcome you all once again. Thank you for joining us in that time of worship. I love to worship. It's like we're created for it or something. Because you are, literally, created to bring glory to God. Please turn in your Bibles to John chapter 20. This is the last part of uh, this mini-series in this story. We've been talking about the life of Jesus. We've talked about the death of Jesus. Today we talk about the resurrection of Jesus, and that's the best part of it all. And Paul said that if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, then we're all just wasting our time. That our belief hinges on the fact that the consequence of sin, which is death and separation from God, that consequence has been defeated. And we just sang about that as well today. Oh death, where is your victory? Oh death, where is your sting? Satan ain't got nothing when we got Jesus. Because all he can do is kill us. And that doesn't last long. So, um, we are in chapter 20. I'm going to summarize the first 10 verses and then we're going to pick up so you're probably pretty familiar with the story of the resurrection and um, it says that Mary was coming to the tomb in order to anoint the body of Jesus with oil. And when, when there, she encountered a couple of angels and saw the body was not there. So she actually runs off and tells the disciples, um, hey, the, the body's not there. And they, they run back. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, actually. She hasn't seen the angels yet. John and Peter run back to confirm the word that she had spoken that the body that the tomb was empty and the body was gone. They thought that most likely somebody had stolen the body. Um, and in fact, even uh, Caiaphas, the high priest, he was actually concerned that someone might steal the body too. That's why there were guards there, because he actually asked Pontius Pilate, hey, just in case the Jews try to pull some stunt, let's put some guards in that tomb. And so the common belief was uh, Jesus' disappearance might have been from a, a grave robber or someone that was going to try to hoax his res resurrection so they could carry on his mission of being the Messiah. Because that was part of the plan, right? If he didn't raise from the dead, then there was no Messiah. There was no saving. So it says that Peter and John got to the tomb and it says they believed the words of Mary, and so they actually head back to the upper room or wherever the disciples were hiding out. Uh, it says later in the chapter that the, the disciples were hiding in fear, fear of uh, being taken by the Romans or uh, fear of being a part of being associated with Jesus and this, this mutiny that he was leading, right? But what did Mary do? We're going to pick up with verse 11. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying, and as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two white angels seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. And they asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. By the way, this is Mary Magdalene. This is not Mary, the mother of Jesus. And there were other Marys as well in the Gospels. Um, but Mary Magdalene was the one that had all the demons cast out of her, and, and she was a disciple of Jesus. And so she's not fortunate to be listed as one of the 12 disciples, but uh, we see her come up often. And here she is, Easter morning. She's the first one there to go honor her Lord. And the Gospels honor her in that sense as well by recording this. But she sees the two angels. Who are you looking for? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around, and she saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. And he asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Continuing in 15. Thinking that he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where have you put him, and I will go get him. 
And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have yet to ascend. I have not yet ascended to my father. Go instead to tell my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. So Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them what, the, what he had said. Um, he, she told him that he had said these things to her. So remember, the disciples were in the room hiding in fear, as it says in the next verse. But Peter and John had already been there to the, to the tomb and come back. And, and it says that they, they confirmed the report that the tomb was empty. But they yet did not have faith. They didn't, it actually says they did not understand the scriptures when it said that he must die and be raised again on the third day. Whatever they told the disciples, the other nine, was not sufficient to give them faith. They were still in fear. Their news was weak good news or, or, or bad news at, at best because they were afraid that if someone had stolen the body that maybe they were next, right? <laughs> but Mary Magdalene, she remained at the tomb. I'll say it this way, she lingered at the tomb. She wasn't in a hurry to go anywhere because where does she have to go? Where else was she going to find hope? Where else was she going to find answers to this empty tomb? But she stayed, remained, and then she has an encounter. I'm going to skip past the encounter with the angels because what really matters is her encounter with Jesus. And Jesus didn't give her a lot of answers either at that time. But Jesus gave her himself. Jesus called her by name. Mary. I know you. I love you. I'm here with you. I'm revealing myself to you before I've revealed myself to anybody else. Because Mary was the one that was lingering. Mary was the one that was yearning to see her Lord and Savior. And then when Mary returns, goes to the disciples and tells them what else has happened, the new information that's happened, what is the good news that she shares? She didn't say anything about the angels. <laughs> that would be pretty cool in itself. She said, I have seen the Lord. She's seen the, res the resurrected Jesus. And that made all the difference. That brought hope. That is the, the essence of our gospel message. That should be the essence of our testimony. Peter says that we should all be ready to give reason for the hope that is within us. And if in that testimony we don't say somewhere, I met the risen Lord then we need to get down on our knees a little longer. We need to be out there in our faith a little more. We need to be encountering Jesus by lingering with, around in Jesus, okay? That's what I feel like when we're, when we're worshiping. When we find that we're in the presence of the Lord, when we find the Holy Spirit is moving, let's just linger there for a while because who knows what encounter is around the corner what we'll encounter will come next. And any time we come face to face with Jesus, or any time you hear Jesus calling out to you, that is a good day. That's a life-changing day. So that's my desire for each of you. But that was on Sunday... And between Friday when he was crucified and Sunday morning, there was a very long Saturday. 
Jess used the word yesterday, pregnant pause, in reference to something else. There was a lot of anxiety and tension and darkness on Saturday. They call it Good Friday. They should have called it Dark Saturday. I don't know. <laughs> um, we had a pretty dark week this week in McGregor. Um, I had already started to write my sermon earlier in the week, and I kind of put that aside and rewrote it based on uh, what happened with the shooting. And next slide, please, Ben. In addition to these five, Lori and Natalie, Aviles, uh, Monica Delgado, Miguel Avila, and Natalie Avila, um, there was also a death in City Hall on Monday, which I didn't know about until Friday. Uh, one of the City Hall employees, Deidre Hicks, I believe is her last name, um, she was found, uh, had a heart attack in the bathroom. And so a very emotional and difficult week, uh, particularly for city employees and city leaders. Um, but for the community as a whole, to have such a, a senseless, violent act, to have what appears to be Satan kind of winning a battle, not the war, but winning a battle this past week, um, that's, that kind of takes a, 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 you know, a blow to the gut. I'm going to say that this week was a, was a Saturday for us, but we get through these times by knowing that Sunday is coming because we have the benefit of living on this side of the cross and this side of the tomb. And in fact, uh, I, I really like First, Thess First Thessalonians 4 when it comes to death in general, especially we know the Aviles family uh, knew the Lord very well, being part of this community and part of Bethlehem Church family. Uh, I don't personally know uh, the other victims. I hope that they knew the Lord. But our view as Christians of death doesn't need to be one of mourning and sadness. There's a time for that. But we need to see it differently. And I'm going to read 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13 to 18. I hope that you'll mark this somewhere in your notes or your Bible because we're in an opportunity right now to provide comfort for those who are grieving and to provide answers for those with questions. And so this is a good time to bone up a little bit on some scripture so that you can be ready in that time to share with others. Can I get an amen? Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's will, we tell you that we are still alive. Sorry. According to the Lord's will, according to the words... Hmm. Father, come. Holy Spirit, come. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is our response to death. We know that there's no victory in death for, for Satan or for sin. Jesus conquered all that when he said it was finished and then put the nail in the coffin of death when he opened up the tomb, when he came out, when he was resurrected again. They call this the blessed hope. That for believers, 
when we believe that we will be reunited with those who have gone before us, our, our blessed hope, our time that we look forward to is when we're raptured up with them back to Jesus, back to heaven, to the marriage, to the wedding supper of the Lamb. So that's our response. That's the comfort that we can give at least to those who are believers. And it's the, it's the exhortation we can give to those who are a little bit on the fence <laughs> about their salvation. You know, we know where we're going. We know where these loved ones went. We know that we'll be with them again. Here's another verse I want you to make a note of. I don't have it on the slides. Psalm 34, 18. And this would be a better one to use for someone that you're not quite sure of their salvation. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. So when we come across someone who is grieving, who is confused, who is depressed, we can give them this scripture and say there's a promise from Yahweh himself that he is not far from you, but he's close to you. And he's making himself available to you. And he's going to lift you up. Many verses about that with Israel coming back into the promised land from after their exile, about how he's going to lift them up and restore them, right? That applies to anybody who receives Jesus. So the resurrection is the good news. And we need to be ready to share our story, say, I have seen the Lord, and that is my hope, that I will be joined with him again. If you want to get involved with um, supporting these victims, uh, I know there's some GoFundMe, at least there's one GoFundMe out there. Um, oh, excellent. That's even better. Um, I'm a little bit... Uh, worried about uh, fraud with GoFundMe and, you know, fake accounts and that kind of thing. So uh, thank you for sharing that. There's a there's a, an account at Rocket Federal, TFNB, where you can deposit specifically for them and trust that it will be used uh, for, for good reasons. Um, and like I said, we're going to be in the community. We're going to be going door to door, knocking on doors, and offering help, offering prayer, offering to counsel with them if they desire that um, so that they can have a place to grieve in a healthy way. So let's go to the, uh, the table talk slide. This is a short message today. Jesus did the work. I don't need to go over it again and again. He is alive. And it's in him, in his presence, in him, his relationship with you, calling you by name, making himself available to you, that is the hope of the world. So here's some, some thoughts for your time uh, in your discussion groups. You're, feel free to go through the, uh, the story questions because I know I skipped over all the chapters pretty much. <laughs> There's a lot of good stories in there of Jesus revealing himself to people, of Jesus um, restoring people after they had so ungraciously fallen in the arrest and the denial of Jesus. Um, but I want you to at least spend some time on these questions also, okay? Is there an area in your life that needs the power of the resurrection? If there's any place in your life where you feel like you're in a Saturday and you're going to die in your Saturday and Sunday is never going to come, then that is a place that needs some serious prayer. That is a place you need to offer up to the Lord. Put it on the cross, so to speak, because Jesus died in order to give you new life. He doesn't have a place in your life anymore. That's making that thing kind of like your own God, saying it's more powerful than Jesus is. Next question, how does the resurrection change our view of death? Talked about that, but let's make that personal. How does the resurrection fuel our call to the Great Commission?
Matthew 28 says, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. If Jesus overcame death, I think it's pretty safe to say that all authority has been given to him. But here's the thing is that Romans 8.11 says that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead now lives in you through the event of Pentecost and through you accepting the work of the Holy Spirit in your life, that regenerating, life-giving work. So we should be intentional about taking that Holy Spirit and taking this command from Jesus in the Great Commission to go proclaim that to everyone who needs to hear it to bring them into the fold, bring them into the family. Let them know that there is a place for them in God's family. Um, definitely spend time encouraging one another. And I'm going to ask you to try to encourage one another with specific scripture. It's okay to Google. It's okay to get your phone out. I do it all the time. But I believe that there's power in the Word, and there's power when we can... Uh, go back to that time and time again, not just for this season, but in future times in your life when you need to hear God's truth. Or, even more importantly, in future times in someone else's life when you need to share God's truth. Okay? So load your belt. If you've got, you know, six shooters, load up those little bullets with God's word so you're ready to go into those situations ready to share the gospel. Okay? Um, and then finally pray for one another and that's, that is our honor and that is our responsibility James 5.14 says that if any of you are sick or if any of you need to have sins forgiven that you should go before the elders of the church present yourself for prayer for the anointing of oil for the confession of sins and you will be healed. So God give us, gives us a prescription for the problems that ail us. And it's, it's with the Holy Spirit in us. Isn't that amazing? All right. Well, Father God, thank you for what you're doing today. Lord, I thank you for the, the events that have transpired since Thursday morning, God. The, the worship service that was uh, so cathartic for our community on, at Bethlehem Church on Thursday night. The the prayer time on Friday morning with city leaders and pastors and members of the community, Lord, that was that was powerful and it was healing, Lord. I pray your blessing on that time, Lord, that it would just uh, it would it would anoint uh, city hall and, and all the employees, Lord, uh, for city council, Lord. I, I I thank you so much for your divine providence that months ago you chose October second, Saturday, for or the first actually for uh, Red Revolution Fun Day. And that you strengthened and encouraged Red Revolution to hold that event despite the events of Thursday so that we would have a healing experience that would bring our community get together at Amsterdam Park. Lord, I thank you for um, the, the ministry and the heart of the Herring family and, and, uh, and holding the community together in that way. Lord, I pray for uh, healing for each of them, Lord, for the first responders, Lord, for all the, the people directly involved, for uh, Chief Burson and, and all the police department. Lord, I pray for the neighbors of this that, that, that had occurred and, and witnessed some of this. God, we need your healing. Holy Spirit, come, Lord, give us insight, give us opportunities, give us ideas on how we can be the hands and feet of Christ and that we can bring that healing where necessary. Hmm. Lord, thank you most of all for sending your son Jesus not only to die on the cross, not only to take our sins to the cross once and for all, but ultimately to be resurrected with new life, 
conquering death and giving us eternal life. Hallelujah. Lord, we don't need to worry about death. Lord, you give us this blessed hope. Lord, you tell us that, that if we die in the Lord or if we live until the rapture, that we will be rejoined with you and with our loved ones for eternal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I'm going to lift up also Brothers for Others and the Flores family. Lord, thank you for working uh, through that ministry. Thank you that we had an opportunity to support them in that ministry. Lord, thank you for their support of us in our ministry. And Lord, thank you most of all for bringing Dom through that surgery. Lord, we pray for her complete, total, utter, and fast healing. In Jesus' name, her recovery would be swift and that she would be able to uh, enjoy being your daughter, your hands and feet, your servant uh, in McGregor and in, and in Waco as she serves so many other people. Lord, we lift up today to you. Lord, we lift up our, our, our concerns. Lord, we know that your resurrection power has the answers and that you have already given that to us. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's close in the Lord's Prayer. I don't know if we have that up or not. Well. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, all on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right. Well, we're going to stay and break up in our groups. Do we want to do three groups today? Two? We'll do two groups, and... I'm praying that you will uh, find a community online. Uh, come and join us Tuesday night. We'd love to have you. We're at Victory Chapel at 7 o'clock. And Lord, bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen.